Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And I think I'd rather have light of life than darkness and death. But hey, that's just my opinion, right? This is kind of, I've done some similar material to this in the past but uh, something I think every person is going to probably look at in the coming years soon you know the uh, Federal Reserve Bank and all the central banks of whatever country you look at whether it be the Bank of Canada Bank of England um, a lot of people don't know it, but they are mm, not part of the government. Yeah, believe it or not, they're not. They are private entities. Yeah. And um, so basically, they're uh, in control of the money of a country. So the Fed, uh, now I'm talking from a U.S. perspective, wants to have a digital currency. You know, that's why they've been talking about, oh, Bitcoin and all these other digital currencies and how secure they are. And, you know, if, if they didn't want this, you wouldn't hear a thing on the news in favor of digital anything i mean the news would be telling you how bad bitcoin is every day for 24 hours a day but let's face it this is what they want so they're telling you oh how secure it is and how great it is and yeah blah 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 so digital currency hmm is that going to tie into the Mark of the Beast? I think so. Let's take a look. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 13. You know, whoever uh, set up the Bibles by chapters and verses, um, I really think they were led supernaturally. I really do. Six... 9, 11, 13 are generally not good numbers. Uh, 1, 3, 7, 10, 12, 24, 40 are good numbers in the Bible, generally. But here's what we got in Gen uh, Revelation 13. We're going to start in verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. Oh yeah, he's, he's like the lamb of God. And he spake as a dragon. So here it is, you got a beast pretending to be the lamb, but really he speaks like a dragon. And if you don't know what the dragon is, read Revelation 12, where, uh, well, let's, uh, let's take a look real quick. Now, I did an entire Bible study on Revelation 12. I think this is one of the most important end time chapters of the Bible, period. I mean, important, very important. So, Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun... And the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Why twelve? Well, how many tribes of Israel are there? Twelve. Okay. Now, if you don't know it, um, this ties into a dream that Joseph had. Yeah, believe it or not, it does. And if you'd never bothered to read the Old Testament story of Joseph... Uh, 
you would never make the connection. But I have, so I did, and there you go. Um, I'm one of those weird people, you know. I uh, I don't spend all my day watching uh, Dancing with the Idols on TV. I mean, Dancing with the Stars or American Idol or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, I very rarely watch television. I mean, very rarely. The only time I ever watch anything at all is probably at work. Um, and that's because everybody else is watching it and, you know, whatever. Uh, but when I do watch it, it's to, why would you say, um, possibly research. Where are they, what kind of things are they trying to show you on TV to make you believe things, you know? I mean, let's face it, they got movies about aliens coming to Earth, and some are good and some are bad, you know, and the, the good aliens want to come and teach us things, you know, they want to help us. But then there's the bad aliens, and then the world's got to join together under the United Nations so that we can fight off the bad, a na na uh, bad UFO angels as a world, you know, the world. We are the world. We are the children. You know, Michael Jackson? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. God wanted his people to be separate and segregated. So, yeah. So sometimes I watch TV, not for the entertainment, just to, but for research to see where they're pushing us. And, uh, you know, I wonder sometimes which way Satan's going to do something. But And I think I got it halfway figured out. And then if you know what baseball is, he throws me a curveball. So, you know, uh, ladies ask your buzz, a boyfriend, husband, what's a curveball? You know, you think it's going to go one way, but it goes the other. So, yeah. But the woman was uh, Jacob Israel's wife. The son is Jacob Israel. Uh, the moon is his mother. And upon her head a crown of 12 stars is the 12 tribes of Israel. So, verse 2. And she being with cried, a uh, child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Huh. Is this a figure of speech? I absolutely think so. Isn't it funny how communism's color is always red? Isn't that the truth? Look at the Soviet Union's old flag, red. Look at uh, Communist China's flag, red. Doesn't Communist China always have a dragon festival? Yeah. Yeah, it makes you wonder who's their, uh, who their boss is, right? So, the great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. Heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Well, when you read in context with Job 38, stars can be represented either suns up in the sky or angelic beings. Look at Job 38. Stars, yeah. So this dragon, his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Yeah, there was a rebellion in heaven, right? And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Um, so who brought up the man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and the child was caught up unto God and to his throne? Christ. Oh, yeah. What did Herod try to do? Try to kill all the children, right? In Beth, uh, Bethlehem. Now, verse 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Well, this is future, people. This is going to be, well, it's happened in the past. Read Hebrews, I think it's chapter 12. But, uh, and the woman, the church, Israel, fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared to God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's basically 42 months, three and a half years. Roughly. 
That is going to be the time of the tribulation. And if you go to a demon nominational church, uh, they will totally tell you lies about all this, either knowingly or unknowingly. And, uh, oh, we're not going to be here. We're going to fly away in the pre-trib rapture. Wee! I don't think so. I think the remnant are going to get their heads cut off or they're going to flee into the wilderness. And that's why each and every one of you needs to know their Bible because the cities are going to be unsafe. People are going to have to flee the cities. They're going to have to go into the hide in the wilderness. You better know what kind of food you can find in the wilderness. And I'm not talking about just, you know, hunting squirrels with your 22 or, uh, you know, do you, do you know what they eat in the wilderness? I mean, they got books on edible plants. Did you know you could eat pine, the inner bark of pine trees? Did you know that? Did you know that pine needles steeped, not boiled, and steeped in warm water, hot water, have vitamin C? If you don't have vitamin C, you got, you'll got you have a disease called scurvy. Severe cases of scurvy, your, your teeth will fall out of your mouth. You ever heard the pirates talking, ah, ye scurvy dogs, are? Well, that's what they're talking about. You know, that's why the British were called limeys, because they took lime uh, trees and pots and then put them on their ships, and then they put some lime juice in their water every day. That's why they were called limeys. And when they did that, they could stay out to sea for long periods of time, whereas uh, the Spaniards couldn't do that. And you can't fight if you uh, if you don't if your vitamin C is gone, you know, uh, for weeks on end, your body just falls apart. You need vitamin C for your body to repair itself. I mean, it's you know, your body just wears out and it can't replace anything. Vitamin C is a very essential thing, and it's got to be replaced daily. You can't you cannot uh, store vitamin C, so. Yeah, you know, learn some wilderness skills, people. It's coming. People are stupid. Oh, we're going to be raptured out of here. Yeah, right. All right, so verse 7. And there was past tense. You know, I was in the army. I was behind on my bills. Past tense. People will say, oh, this is going to happen in the future. No. This happened somewhere between Genesis chapter 2 and Genesis chapter 3. Was. Past tense. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. And prevailed not. The dragon prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Think about that next time you read Genesis 3 about the serpent talking to Eve in the garden. Yeah. Yeah. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. And that's you and that's me. Some of us are deceived more than others. I'd like to think that I'm just deceived just a little bit, but you never know. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. People, this is a test. I've actually heard Satanists argue that Satan is so powerful that God can't destroy him. After all, why is he still around? Well, because God can't destroy him. That's why he's here. Satan's more powerful than God. He's actually able to do the Mandela effect and change the Bible supernaturally. God's not able to stop him. I've heard it all. I've heard all that garbage. That's why there's 666 versions of the Bible. Because, you know, if, if every, every Bible was wrong, 
They wouldn't need 666 different versions of the Bible. Sorry, wouldn't need it. Wouldn't happen. So, what can I tell you? Yeah. You know, Satan doesn't have a time machine where he went back and changed the Bible. Sorry. Uh, and you ever seen a cat play with a mouse before it kills it? Yeah. So God is allowing Satan on this earth to test each and every one of us. Who are you going to follow? Who does your heart belong to? You want the things of this world or you want the things of the Lord? Because when God throws somebody into hell, he's gonna, they're going to know full well why they're there. And he's given us a chance. And these fools that are going to take the mark of the beast, I don't care if they went to church their whole life, their parents went to church, their grandparents went to church. You took the mark of the beast? Really? You're going to hell, buddy. So... Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Do you have the blood of the Lamb? Do you have the blood of the Lamb? Do you have the word of the testimony of Jesus Christ? And they loved not their lives unto the death. That's not the modern church world that I know. I'll tell you that right now. So, let's go back to Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And if you read... Um, about uh, the beast that rises up out of the sea, uh, it'll tell you that the waters where the woman sits is, um, da, 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 let me find that if I could find it real quick. All right, I found it. Revelation 17, 15. And he saith unto me, the waters you know the sea? The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples, peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. When you see this beast rising up out of the sea, it's talking about the sea of humanity, people. I mean, let the Bible interpret the Bible. Bingo. Um, so, yeah. You know, YouTube has a channel search function. Uh, when you're on my channel, uh, where the bar is, where it says community and all that stuff, if you go all, hit the arrow all the way to the right, it'll come up what looks like a magnifying glass. And if you type in Revelation chapter 12 and click on it, every study I've done on Revelation 12 will come up where I go into this chapter in detail because I really do I think this is a very very important chapter um, let's see all right uh, verse 11 Revelation 12 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lies unto the death Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, the sea of humanity. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, the Israel, the church, which brought forth the man-child, Mary, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, 
that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time, a year, and times, two years, and half a time, half a year, from the face of the serpent. If you read in the book of Exodus, when God took Israel out of Egypt, he said he bare them on eagle's wings. Did God create this big eagle that could carry a half a million people? No, it's figure of speech, people, you know. I did a Bible study on eagle's wings, too. Yay. Boy, I can't. Yeah, I think about it. I've done a lot of Bible studies. So, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, a flood of humanity, a flood of heathen aliens. Isn't that what's happening today in uh, all the Western nations? Oh, yeah. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now, this is future. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Oh yeah, guess what? There's going to be, when the Bible says the earth opened her mouth, when um, there was a guy named Korah, Cory, in the Bible that confronted Moses. And he thought Moses was being a dictator. And he's challenging Moses' authority. Well, guess what happened? The earth opened up and swallowed Korah and his family. Yeah. And the Bible even says that earth opened her mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Korah found out you don't question God's authority. You just don't do it. You know, God picked Moses. And, uh, you know, it's like the Lord, uh, God the Father picked Christ, his only begotten son. And uh, the you-know-who's questioned his authority. And uh, they probably don't like where the place they are right now. They could probably use some air conditioning and some ice water, but uh, they don't have it. So, yeah, what can I tell you? And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. People, the cities are going to be destroyed in an earthquake. And I even did a series on earthquakes. I'm telling you, people, the Bible makes so much sense. Turn off your TV. Read the Bible. Get the Bible, King James, Alexander Scorby on MP3 or whatever it is. Stick it in your car on the way to work every day. You'd be surprised how much you'll learn, how fast. 17. And the dragon was wroth, angry with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Yeah, that's right. It's a small remnant. And here's the two conditions. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. God doesn't, you know, God the Father doesn't give a darn if you keep the commandments of God if you don't have the testimony of Jesus. Really, think about it. And if you listen to the Seventh-day Adventists, they'll, they'll, oh boy, I'll tell you what, they'll, uh, they'll tell you that, uh, the uh, uh, keeping the Sabbath, it's like to them, it's like a requirement for salvation. Oh, well, you got to keep the Sabbath and believe in Jesus. I mean, they make it a requirement of salvation. I mean, all these people that you know esteem every day. Oh, the you listen to people like Walter Veith, you'd make you'd think that they're going to go to hell, really. So let's go to Matthew 22 real quick. I know I've beat this horse to death, but we're going to beat it one more time. 
Verse 35 of Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer. Now, we're not talking about a Harvard-educated uh, lawyer that teaches man's laws. We're talking about a lawyer who knows God's laws, the Bible, the Torah, I guess you could say. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, Jesus, a question, tempting him and saying. So here it is, they're trying to trick and trip up Jesus. Boy, I tell you what, you ask Jesus a question trying to trip him up, you're going to be put in your place, buddy boy, girly girl. He said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And I'm hoping you don't live next door to a bunch of Satanists. Because I'm not going to love Satanists. Either I'm going to move or I'm going to remove them. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law. All the law and the prophets. We don't need the Ten Commandments. We got the Two Commandments. There you go. Tell that to the Seventh-day Adventists. They don't believe the Bible. Ooh, you got to keep the Sabbath. See, Ellen White claims that she went to heaven and she saw the tablets, the Ten Commandments on the tablets of stone and the, the Sabbath-keeping commandment just glowed. And then she went back to earth and whatever, you know. No, they, she really, they really teach this stuff. So, yeah. All right, let's go back to uh, da, 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 Revelation 13. Verse 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, the sea of humanity, right, people? And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. You know, the waters that thou sawest, where the woman sitteth, the whore sitteth, are people, nations, languages, and tongues. Or nations and tongues, whatever. Paraphrasing. The Bible explains the Bible, but it only works with the King James. So when you throw away the King James, you got dog manure. And you can put lipstick on a pig, but guess what? It's still a pig. And I don't, still don't want to kiss it. So... And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his ten and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. What does a mouth do? It speaks things, right? What is uh, Jesus called? Oh, the lion of the tribe of Judah. So this beast is going to talk like it's he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. See, the beast is given his power by the dragon. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and his power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. That's three and a half years, roughly, people. Yeah. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And if you think the saints are the Antichrist that live over in the Middle East, well, you're going to be totally misled. 
to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. He's going to rule the whole world. And of all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the of uh, in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world do you know that there are people whose names are written in the book of life and there are those whose names are not written in the book of life but if you listen to your demon nominational preachers they'll say well you know when you come to jesus god writes your name in that book of life i don't believe that i think our names were written in the book of life before the foundation of the world do you know the bible teaches that your name could be blotted out of the book of life blotted out does that mean god has written it in pencil and has an eraser and writes our name out or is it in ink and you know back in the old days they had ink blotters and you know you, your name gets blotted out i don't know all i know is make sure if your name's written in the book that it stays there verse 9 if any man have an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and faith of the saints. That's the people that keep the two commandments and have the testimony of Jesus. Not the Antichrist over in the Middle East. Sorry. No, I'm not. Verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and they'll, them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. Miracles, people. Miracles. He's going to do miracles. So that he maketh fire come down from the heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Guess who else did this? Elijah the prophet. I did a one hour and 40 minute study on the life of Elijah the the prophet and you better believe this false prophet is going to probably call himself Elijah and you watch all the rabbis all the church leaders of your big TV evangelists will all say oh Elijah has come does the same miracles as Elijah And they're going to tell you that the beast is uh, Christ. Maybe I don't know. I, I'm I'm I don't know. Um, I don't know if they're going to try to pretend to be Christ returned, or if they're going to say that Christ was a false Messiah. I tend to believe the latter, but I don't know. So. He's going to bring fire down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. How can the image of the beast speak? Television? I don't know. All right, here's the punchline. Verse 16. Revelation chapter 13, 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, uh, that's me, the poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. When you look up the word mark in the Greek, I think it's chiragma. It has reference to uh, like a like a brand. You know, have you ever seen a cattle get branding in a western uh, or an etching, like uh, an injection type thing? It's got several shades of meaning. So they're going to receive a mark in their right hand 
right hand or in their foreheads. Some people don't have a right hand. And that no man or woman might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Let me give you a little background about me. In the mid to late 70s, I, uh, after I'd gotten out of the Army, I went to work for the largest bank in the Southeast. Um, and they were actually called Southeast Banks. They are no longer in uh, business. They were taken over by the Bush uh, family's banking thing. Um, I think they're... I'm not sure. I think they're Wachovia now. I'm not sure. But uh, they were the largest bank in Florida. And I worked in the computer data center. So I was very familiar with computers. And you may not know it, but every uh, bill in your purse or wallet has a serial number. And they have a magnetic strip. And when you get money out of your ATM, um, they know the serial numbers that were issued to you. Whether they read the magnetic ink, if that's what they use on the bill, um, you may not know it, but your checks, uh, your checks use a magnetic ink and that's what they read them with. Uh, when they go through the uh, check sor sorter machines. Yeah, I've seen them firsthand. Um, but uh, there's a website, or was, I don't know if it still exists, called Where is George? Or Where's George? As in George Washington. And you could take a serial number for a $1 bill. Well, they call it a dollar bill, but it's not. It's just a piece of paper that says $1 bill. And you can track it. One day it'll be in Miami, Florida, and somebody gets on a plane and goes to Denver and gets off the plane and buys a cup of coffee at the airport. And next thing you know, the uh, airport gives it to somebody and then they drive to New Mexico and then somebody there spends it and it goes to California. And then somebody in California gets on a plane and goes to New York. And, you know, the bill just keeps traveling around. And you could track where this bill is. Well, they could do that with everything. All the, all, all the bills. Now, you may not know it, but uh, the legal definition of a dollar is one ounce of 90% pure silver. That is the legal definition of a dollar. One ounce of 90% silver. Yeah, we don't have dollars anymore. We just have green pieces of paper that claim to be a dollar. And the government just prints more of it. And that's what inflation is. Um, inflation is not the value of goods going up. It's the value of the money going down due to being diluted. Because every time you double the money supply, the value of the money is cut in half. So that candy bar that I used to buy for a nickel when I was a child is now a dollar or something or two dollars i don't know so that means the value of the money has been diluted by over 20 times yeah do you know that in the 1920s you could have bought a brand new ford car for about 500 dollars? yeah yeah So, what does that tell you? And eight, eight to ten, twelve thousand dollars would have bought one heck of a home back then. You know, a modest single family, middle class, you know. All right, so. Here is wisdom. Let he that hath 
understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six, 666. Now, why am I telling you this about the banking and the money and blah, 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 and they want to go to digital currency, right? Well, guess what? I worked at the bank. I told you that. I had a, worked in the computer center. In the late 80s, I was in college for computer science and business. I took, I was a business computer science major. And with these computers that they have today, they could actually do digital money. So really, really easily. And if you're in China and you got a bad social score because you criticized a policy of the government, well, they can cut you off. Digital currency, they can cut you off. Think about it. And if you're bad, 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 they can cut your head off. Well, guess what? I also took electronics in college, well, not college, uh, vocational school. And I was amazed at what they were doing in the 80s. I can imagine what they have now. Do you know there's a company that produces, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. In late 18, 1989, December of 89 somebody had witnessed to me in a doctor's office I was sick and dying and they witnessed to me and told me about the real gospel first time I'd ever heard it in my life not the Billy Goat Graham garbage that I was listening to when I was in middle school and uh, went to a hotel room and found a Gideon's Bible, King James, and started looking at all the verses that they had asked me to look up. And I was there and realized, wow, the one world government that I'd been finding out about before I knew about the Bible, here it is, just like they told me. Well, I repented for sure. Well, a few months later, probably about the middle of 1990, I had been doing a series of Bible studies and I had read the Bible from cover to cover for the first time. Started off in Genesis 1-1 and finished in Revelation chapter 22. Well, I had just read this chapter 13 in Revelation and I asked the Lord, Lord, what is the mark of the beast? Well, that morning, I got a newspaper, and guess what was in the newspaper? There was an article. A Jewish veterinarian was giving a dog a microchip injection. Hey, if your dog gets lost, we could scan the microchip, and we'll know the dog's name and who the owner's address is, and be able to contact them and return your dog. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. And I looked at that and I said, that's the mark of the beast. Now, I don't claim to be a prophet. And this might have been a coincidence. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not saying it definitely is, but that was what I was thinking in my mind. This is going to be the mark of the beast. People, one of the companies that makes... These microchips is called Digital Angel. Digital Angel. One of the fallen angels, I'm sure. But that's that was what they called it. Can you imagine if they took every microchip and injected it into everybody's hand or in their forehead? It's about the size of a grain of rice. With your unique identifier, maybe your social security number, I don't know. 
with a prefix of 666. And if you don't read computer code, I guess you would never know that. You know, those stupid movies they used to have in the 70s about, you know, they, they would put 666 tattoo on their their hand or, or a barcode. That's bull. Bull manure. Yeah, that's what that is. I was going to use the other word, but you get the idea. Yeah. Hey, in a microchip, everybody would have to pay their fair share of taxes, right? No more tax evasion. Your child gets lost or kidnapped. Well, we, we know where you're, we can return your child to you. Isn't it great? We can have a microchip with your child's address and name and, oh, oh, and, and has your child been vaccinated? We want to make sure your child is perfectly healthy and, and, you know, do they have diabetes or do they have asthma? We got to protect the children. You know, we could put all your medical information on that chip. We could put your government identification on the chip. Have you ever been arrested? Do you have a driver's license? We can tie in your bank account. You won't be able to buy or sell without the chip or the mark of the beast. Oh, wait. You criticized uh, Prime Minister Trudeau or whoever the current president is of the EU or the USA or, or you criticized Putin or whatever. Well, we're cutting off your Social credit score is zero, so we're going to cut off your thing for a month. You can't buy or sell because you've been a bad little boy or girl. Preach the word of Jesus? Uh-uh. Ooh, you've been bad. Think about it, people. Think about it. I, I, I honestly do believe that the some type of microchip is going to be the mark of the beast. I believe that's what the Lord showed me. I'm not claiming to be a prophet. I'm not claiming 100% that I'm right. But I I find it quite a coincidence that, you know, and it's like all my education and background was leading up to this. And if I'm wrong, well, what can I tell you? I'm sorry. But I don't think I am. And all the preacher of rapture fools that think they ain't going to be here. We're going to fly away. You watch. They'll take the mark. Because they've been told they're not going to be here for the mark. They're not going to be here. So it can't be the mark. Because they're not going to be here. They're going to fly away before this happens. They've been told. And I don't think so. So, funny how the, all the central banks are all wanting to go to a digital currency. Now, you got to realize something. Um, maybe the economies will collapse. Maybe there'll be a massive die-off, a disease. Uh, and by the way, somebody pointed out that uh, you'll know when the tribulation starts when there's massive die-offs of people and i'm talking hundreds of millions of people you'll know that's when it's starting so when people start dying in massive numbers maybe there's uh matthew 24 i did a bible study on matthew 24 uh famines and all kinds of bad things happening economy crashes you know we're going to need a savior. Maybe Satan will bring his supernatural savior and uh, promise peace and safety. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh upon them as woman travail upon a woman with child. Oh, yeah. That's in Thessalonians, by the way. And by the way, they'll tell you Paul's a false apostle because, you know, they don't want to believe Thessalonians. They want you to not think that that belongs in the Bible. But they're liars and deceivers. And they can go to hell as far as I care. I'm pretty harsh, aren't I? 
I've had people tell me, Bob, you're a, you're a radical. No, you're cold as ice. Really. So think about people. A microchip would fit perfect. Absolutely. Don't be fooled. Right now we can study the Bible freely. Sort of. And oh, by the way, this uh, all this hoopla about the uh, Israelis wanting to uh, make preaching the gospel in the Israeli state illegal, that's a lie. It's already illegal. It's been illegal since the 90s, at least since I know it. Uh, it's three to five years imprisonment for preaching the gospel over, over there. It's been illegal for decades, which some people have found out. So I think what they're doing now is they're uh, just coming out of the closet, so to speak, and getting people to, um, well, it's what's called setting up a trial balloon. You know, you float something out there and, and see what kind of pushback you get. Right now, they're trying to see how many real Christians are there. And I'm telling you, there are so few. You know, churches might be full of people, but they're not the remnant for the most part. I, I, at least that's my opinion. You know, there I heard once said by somebody, everybody's a Christian until the guillotine comes out. Yeah. You're going to see how true that really is. When people find out that they have to die for the faith, wow. Uh, read the book of Acts. People died for the faith. They had to flee the cities. They ain't willing to do that now. I mean, they're afraid to even lose their job because... You know, talking about Jesus at work. Oh, I can't do that. I'll lose my job. Well, back in the days of the book of Acts, people lost their lives. So, Bob, you're a radical. No, those people are just stone cold. They're colder than an iceberg in the Antarctic. But what can I tell you? They lie, whether knowingly or unknowingly. And these people are going to be your enemy. So what can I tell you? All right, everybody. Um, I hope... Uh, that you'll learn some wilderness and survival skills because you know what? People are going to have to flee the cities. They're going to be dangerous. They won't be able to survive in the city. The, the flood of the dragon is going to be there that's going to try to carry the woman away. And they're going to have to flee to the wilderness to survive. And they're going to need you people to tell them when they ask the question, why is all these things happening unto us? It is because we have forsaken the Lord. Yeah, we have forsaken the Lord. God's wrath and judgment is upon this wicked world. And if you read 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 17... Peter, and I did a, I did, you know, I did a two-part series on the life of Peter. Yeah. Peter's probably my favorite uh, apostle. Why? Because I can, I can relate to his life. Uh, a lot of parallels of my life mm, is similar to his. Although I, I am not comparing myself to Peter. But I had some of the same shortcomings, I guess you could say. But in 1 Peter 4, 17, Peter writes, For the time has come that judgment, uh, judgment is not wrath, 
okay? Uh, your kid might steal a cookie and you might spank your kid. That's not wrath. That's judgment, okay? Judgment is not wrath. Judgment is getting spanked. And then you repent. You say, oh, mommy, I'm sorry. I stole that cookie. Wrath is destruction. Okay? Judgment is not. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yeah, God's people are going to get judged. We're going to get spanked before wrath comes. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And that would be wrath, destruction, the flames of hell. So, there you have it, people. Learn wilderness skills. Some of you... Some of us are going to be martyred for the faith. Read Matthew 24. I got an entire playlist on Matthew 24 where I go, I don't remember how long it is, but, uh, you know, write me. You want all my Bible studies, write me. Send me an SD card or a USB drive. I don't even charge you. I'll even pay for the postage. You know, I don't care. I'll buy the envelope and, and pay for the postage. I don't care. But at least a 64 gig. Uh, 128 is even better. But 64 will cover everything I've done. But, you know. But I got some videos from other people that are uh, well worth watching. That you could show other people. Uh, topics like 9-11. Um, Sandy Hook and yeah, some other, you know, things like that. But it's not really Bible study, so. And I'm sorry I've been neglecting everybody, but you know what? I'm at the point where um, YouTube is just deleting all my stuff and I get strikes. I can't load anything. I say the wrong thing and I get in trouble, and I'm at the point I don't even care anymore. So, and I'm working full time. So, you know, it's, what can I tell you? But it's getting to the point you can't even talk about Christ anymore. So, you know, I got 1,500 videos, people. I got a lot of old stuff. And I've only had one person that's ever written me and said they've listened to every single thing I've done. I know it took them a year or more. And uh, she knows who she is over in the UK. And I appreciate the encouragement because, uh, you know, but a lot of the things I said years ago, they're coming to pass. It's like the Lord shows me this stuff. And you know what? <sighs> Sometimes I'd rather not know. Really, I'd rather not. Sometimes I'd rather not know. I mean, I know it's coming. People hope I'm wrong, but I don't think so. Well, until our last day on this earth, let us praise the Lord. Thank him for our goodness, for his goodness. And uh, praise his holy name and his works and his grace and love and mercy. I know I did nothing to deserve his love, grace, and mercy. Nothing. We love him because he first loved us. Yeah. So... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.